So we're going to build this up slowly. In Arabic grammar, there is a concept of what we call sun and moon letters. And they're divided into 14 and 14. And we've got a table here showing us which letters are classed as sun letters and which are classed as moon letters. So we need to know what is the significance of this. And this is related to the definite article and how you use it. So terminology, sun letters in Arabic, they're known as al harufu shamsiya okay? Um, and the word shams is sun, okay? Huruf here means letters. And then we've got the moon letters, they're known as al harufu qamariya okay? And the moon again is qamar in Arabic. Okay, so break it down into the sun and moon letters. And we'll see later on the rule that we're looking for is actually built into these actual words as examples. Okay, so now we get into why we need to know these sun and moon letters. So I'm just going to read this. We're going to ask ourselves a question, okay, and this is again for the noun. Is the first letter in the word, and in our case we're really talking about nouns, a sun or moon letter and in the brackets I've got without the definite article i.e. if you look at a word without the definite article added to it is the first letter a sun or moon letter okay now if it is a sun letter we're going to add a shadda when we put on the definite article so let's explain with this simple example again we've highlighted things in red so we have a noun so this is Shamsun, or if you just read it um, as a normal word, you'll just say shams. So that's the sun. Now, the first letter, the sheen, is classed as a sun letter. We then go to change the indefinite noun into a definite noun. So we add the definite article al, so which is the hamzatul wasl and lam. So then you say, okay, the first letter, the sheen, is a sun letter. So what we're going to do when we add or prefix the word with the definite article al, we are going to add a shadda on the sheen. Okay, so shamsun becomes effectively al, sorry, ashamsu. Okay, and this is important because we need to know how we read them. And effectively, the shadda letter, i.e. The, the letter with the shadda, will always be joined to a previous sound. Okay, so if we were to read the definite article as al normally, what will happen here, and you'll notice in your script that when the shadda is added to the sun letter, they will not put a sukun on top of the lamb of the definite article. And the reason is we're joining the effectively the fatah that would normally be read on top of the Hamzatul Wasl directly to the letter with Shadda. So instead of saying Al Shamsu, we will have to read this as Ash Shamsu. Now, let's contrast this or compare it, whichever way you want to look at it as, to a moon letter. So we do the same thing again. And the rule is if the first word is one of the moon letters, we do not add a shadda to it when we prefix the word with the definite article. So here we've got the word qamara. Sorry. We've got the word qamar. Okay? And the full with the grammar would be qamarun. Okay? So indefinite noun. Prefix it with the definite article. It becomes al qamaru. Okay? So we've dropped one of the dhamma. So again, you look at the first letter, it's one of the moon letters. When we add the definite article al, we do not put a shadda on the letter. In this case, the letter is qaf. So in that case, the al is actually read as al, and you've got a sukun will be put on top of the lamb. And we've done the sukun here in computer font, which is the round circle. So this will be read as al qamaru. Okay, so you can see the difference now. The simple rule is when you're adding the definite article onto an indefinite noun, i.e. to make it definite, look at the first letter. If it's a sun letter, we add a shadda. If it's a moon letter, we do not. And then when you read the al, if it's a sun letter, 
you effectively assimilate that or join it with the letter with Shadda and if it's a moon letter you effectively um, read the Al as Al okay so we're going to look at a few examples to sort of build on this and remember if you just remember these two words Shams and Qamar then effectively you've got the two words that you need to remember for this particular rule and that's why they're called the sh the sun and moon letters because it's a simple example to remember okay so actually pronouncing the definite article I've already gone over this but we're gonna do this in detail just to sort of reiterate it so if you have no sound before the definite article so what we mean that by that let's take both the moon and sun letters so again I've got the uh, top examples are Uthmani script the bottom ones are Majidi now let's take the first one under the moon letters so this is Alhamdu now what we're saying here is there's no sound beforehand I we are starting let's say at the beginning of a sentence so you've got the Hamzatul Wasl and the Lam and we need to start to read this so now the thing is what do we read as the sound on top of the Hamzatul Wasl because itself does not have a sound so the rule is with a definite article there's no sound before it you read the Hamzatul Wasl as if it's got a fatha on it so this will be Al Hamdu and notice there is a sukun on the Lam because the Ha here is a moon letter it's not carrying a Shadda now down below that you'll notice what they do in the Majidi script to help you along so they drop the Wasla and they put in a fatha for you so you can just read it as alhamdu so it's easier you don't need to know all these grammar rules now in the case of the sun letters so here we have a word starting with uh, ra so ra is one of the sun letters so when we add the definite article al to it it takes a shadda now it's the same rule here there's no sound before it beginning of the sentence so we read the hamzatul wasl as if it's got a fatha but because we've now got the shadda on top of the ra, the shadda has to join to a, a sound before it. So we're going to effectively completely skip the lam. So we're going to join the fatha, which is going to be on top of the wasla, and join that to the ra. So in this case, and you'll know this um, word, we'll say al ra, al ra. Okay? You cannot say al and then the ra because the shadda has to join to something. So it's al ra and below they've got the same word now this is Majidi again now they haven't drawn the wasla and actually in this case they have not even put in a factor for you um, the reason for that one is in this case is I've, I've effectively taken that out of a line of Quran and there is actually a sound before it so you'll be joining to the sound before anyway so they didn't need to put in the factor for you okay but if you were to see that on its own all we need to know there's no sound before it read the al as if it's got a fatah on the Hamzatul Wasl and join it to the letter with Shadda. Now we'll do the same thing but this time we'll take an example where there is a sound before the letters or before the words. So here we have the word again and this is the word Qamar but we've got Wal sorry we've got the the word Wa before it okay so we've got the definite article but before that is wa so in this case you now do not read the hum